What are my different types of polyps? Uh, malignant or benign? Right, there's know. three types. Of the dip, like it's different types of tissue. I can't remember. Right now. Like a yeah, square, oh, oh. or harmonic, or sessile. Sessile. Yeah. So we've got the sessile, <clears throat> the pedunculated, yeah. oh, and adenosarcoma. Adenosarcoma. Of these, which is my most likely to become cancers? I've seen that three times fast. That's true. So what can we do for somebody with these kind of polyps? These two. Come on. Good. Polypectomy. We get your can go in. Either we can go in a colonoscopy or an EGD, whichever way the polyps are. Mm -hmm. and we can just, they take like a little lasso and... The cauterizing. Mm -hmm. Don't they just cauterize it off? Yep, they cauterize it like as it goes. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> they'll take off, usually if they're really big, they won't take them out. Um, they usually do that in surgery. Because but it might bleed a lot? It might bleed too much, and if you take off a huge one, you might not be able to get it out through the colonoscopy uh, scope, so. Um, let's see. Why do we need to increase calcium intake with somebody with polyps? Decreases recurrence? Yep, it just, for some reason, we don't really know why, but calcium like decreases the chance of getting polyps again. It's weird. Mm -hmm. Super weird. I don't like it when they have these things and you don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Magic. <clears throat> what are my diagnostic tests? How are we going to find out that somebody has polyps? Digital oh, examination. Mm -hmm. What is a digital examination? So you stick your finger up. Oh, yeah. Yep. EGD, or I mean, not the EGD, but the endoscopy is the way I roll for the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can do an endoscopy, so either a colonoscopy or an EGD, figure out where the polyps are. Mm -hmm. um, barium enema. Yep, barium oh, enema will show. And then it's super important that we give them something called, uh, uh, what is it called? Go lightly, which it should be called go heavily. Just yeah. cleans them out. Because <laughs> we don't want to like find something on a barium swallow or a barium enema and then go in to find out that it was a cookie, you know? Yeah. So. That would be annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just for the barium, or do we give them go lightly for like everything? Usually we give them go lightly for everything. Um, yeah. <laughs> How are we going to find out if somebody has hemorrhoids and um. we can't see them? <laughs> yeah, digital examination also. <laughs> what are my huge three signs and symptoms of somebody with hemorrhoids? Bleeding. Bleeding. What is my blood going to look like in the stool? Right, red. Right, red. Good, because it's just right there. Uh, itching. Itching. Mm. Lots of times the itching is because they're not cleaning the anal area good enough because like all of that stuff is sticking out. It just hurts to wipe, and so. Mm. Yeah, and it hurts. <laughs> yeah, pain. Pain. Mm. Yep. Pain, itching, and bleeding. So, what can we do as nurses for somebody with hemorrhoids? Sit bath. Sit mm -hmm. bath. Does everybody know what a sit bath is? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Non-prescription creams or ointments. Says dibucaine. Dibucaine. That's just like this cream that they, it's kind of like lidocaine. That's oh, what so I think like of it as. So it just kind of numbs it, yeah. makes it less painful. And then which hazel pads or the tux pads, they kind of like cool down that area, makes it a little less painful by numbing it because of the cold. What about, um, what are some things that we need to teach our patient? Because they're going to go home and they're probably still going to have hemorrhoids. Not to stream. Mm -hmm. Good. 
wiping with like moistened wipes or softer uh -huh. wipes. So it's and they're not irritating. technically supposed to wipe either. They're supposed yeah. to just kind of like blot it. Blot it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, teach them like to usually with these patients we get them on a regular bowel schedule so we'll take them to the bathroom like regularly three times a day maybe or every two hours to get him uh, like oh it's three o'clock I need to go to the bathroom go poop mm -hmm. so oh, bowel training yeah why mm -hmm. would you do that with hemorrhoids though so that they don't <clears throat> um, because it. constipation can cause hemorrhoids so if we get them on a regular bowel schedule, then that decreases the chance for constipation. But who has to poop every two hours? Yeah. How does bowel training work? Because if I just went inside on the toilet, I wouldn't be able to force myself. To it's poop. like who poops every two hours? Well, it's not just for pooping. I mean, you pee oh, okay. almost every two hours. Okay, that so. makes sense. 